The best way to learn a language? Immersion. Living where the language is spoken and using it every day. But if that's not in the cards this year, you can still learn a language the second best way, and that's with Babbel. One in five Americans have learn a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, make 2024 the year you finally check it off the list with Babbel. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Babbel is so convenient. I have been getting so much better at my Spanish just by doing the courses that they have. I am hoping to one day be able to go back to Mexico and visit my family. And for that, I need to make sure my Spanish is almost perfect. I love how the app makes it so easy to learn how to order food, ask for directions, speak to merchants. It's literally so easy. Babbel has over 16 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com pretty. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash pretty, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash pretty. Rules and restrictions may apply. Our skin has a huge effect on our confidence. If you have acne or are noticing signs of aging, like me, it can be frustrating to waste time and money on products that aren't formulated for you. That's why I recommend Curology. Curology makes personalized prescription skincare products. It's easy. Just fill out a quiz about your skin, share photos, and a provider will prescribe a personalized formula based on your skin's unique needs. Curology products give you everything you need and nothing you don't without fragrances or parabens. 93% report effective with over 9,000 five-star reviews. Products are shipped directly to your door every two months. Visit Curology.com slash pretty for a special offer. That's Curology, C U. R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash pretty. Offer applies only to your first box. Subject to consultation, new subscribers only. Are you that one friend in the friend group that loves to treat yourself? It's okay. Honestly, we all do it. You know, you always buy double at a sale because it's like saving money. Well, if you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all. Enter ZocDoc. The place where you can find a book, tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all with verified patient reviews. So don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With SockDoc, you've got more options than you know. SockDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. I was recently looking for a new dentist and didn't know where to go. But thanks to ZocDoc, I was able to find a highly rated dentist near me. Go to ZocDoc.com slash PrettyNotSmart and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash PrettyNotSmart. ZocDoc.com slash PrettyNotSmart. Welcome back to another episode of Pretty Not Smart with your host, Louis, a.k.a. The Baddest Perra. And Joazzi. Hello, good morning. How are you? Rise and shine. Oh, it is kind of like good morning. We're kind of filming this at an earlier time. Yeah, we usually film really late. We're like... Uh, <laughs> you guys, it's like 3 p.m. I no, know it's for them, they're going to be listening to this at 9 a.m. Yeah, so good morning, sunshine. Have you done your affirmations today? Uh, they're going to be like, thanks to you. Now I'm starting a bad morning. Uh, <laughs> they're like, oh, great. <laughs> Talking about affirmations. I just want to dive directly into your dumbass fucking <gasps> fact of the day. Oh, my God. Because so uh, far, a lot of your facts have been wrong. It's not that they're wrong. It's just that there's different <laughs> thoughts and opinions to facts. No. Yes. One of the which one was the one that you were saying? Everybody in the comments was saying that it was wrong. Which one? Which was the last Fuck. one you did? 
the the coconut. No, not that one. Uh, that one was right. Uh, it wasn't the oh oh it was the the sleeping one. <laughs> that one's real. <laughs> No, they said that that's not what it is at all. But it's open. You see, they're open for conversation. No, they're but, open to judging if we're dumb or smart. Okay, well, my facts aren't 100% factual. They're Yuatsi facts, okay? Uh, like, like, exactly. No. Exactly. They should be correct because they're, they're called facts. They're dumbass facts of the day. Okay, what's your okay. dumbass fact? So this one, I know Louie knows it, but you guys might not know it because I didn't know it. And now I want to share it. And Louis could give us a little bit more insight on it. No, I'm scared. It's a hi, old chihuahua. <laughs> no, this one's a good one when I found out about it. So you know how designer bags, right? Mm -hmm. They're like expensive and luxurious and all this good shit. Yeah. And a lot of designer bags um, have outlets. Did you know that? Yes. But one brand in particular does not have an outlet. I think I know which one. Miss Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. And if you guys did not know, Louis Vuitton is allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Don't scare me. I don't want to get food. I, we won't. But allegedly, they do not want people to get their stuff at like cheaper prices. Mm -hmm. So, like, say one bag is out of style or it's just not selling anymore. Instead of having an outlet store and taking it to sell it for like a cheaper price, allegedly <laughs> they burn <laughs> yeah. their handbags. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> they burn them because like nobody's gonna get this for cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, that's real. I mean, allegedly that's what i've heard that's what i've heard too i think the closest you can get to getting like a really, really hunk bag for like a cheaper price is um if you're a sales associate, associate. oh you get obviously they get like little discounts and stuff yeah but they don't have sales you'll never find like a sale you'll Louis never Vuitton. find a sale um even but if a bag's return and it's damaged like don't I burn it I know. I think they. I think they give an even bigger discount to their um, sales associates. Uh huh. So I can't say that word. Sales associates. Oh, sales associates. Sales oh, wow! Associates. I've been saying it wrong my whole life. Associates. Yeah, that's how I've always said. Sales associate. associates. It never sounded right, but anyways, yeah. So they only give like a discount to them, and if not, then it's like. So I'm gonna put Louis on the spot, but remember one time we went to a Louis Vuitton, and Louis was looking for a little. I think it was your little oh my God, nano. Why did I know you were gonna say that because uh -huh. I just thought about it. His little nano speedy, right? Uh -huh. And he wanted that bag for like a long time, but it would always be sold out. It was always gone for years. And then randomly, we showed up, and the lady in front of us, she was like, "I'm here to return this like mm -hmm. speedy." And Louis was like, "Oh!" Yeah. He like flipped out, and he was like, "I want that bag." Mm -hmm. So. The moment that that lady was returning it, Louis was already like, I'm going to buy it. But they didn't want to sell it to him because since it was a return, it had to go through like a process. Mm -hmm. And then I think it might have been damaged. So they're like, if it's damaged, we can't sell it. Mm -hmm. But then they, they ended up selling it to you, huh? So what happened is like these like nano bags, they're like super tiny, you guys. Um, they were they came out like years ago uh -huh. and you were able to still find them for like vintage so they're always oh, used right. like they're already like years of like they had to be like hand-me-downs or resale or whatever and then Louis Vuitton came out with a new version of them recently because they were so high in demand but now they have like a strap attached to them and you uh -huh. can't detach it a fuerzas it's like stuck. It's stuck on there unless you fucking cut it off but then you're devaluating the the bag the, yeah because you're cutting the there bag. you go so basically I had been looking for these th that bag like the new version because i always wanted like a new one i was looking for it and nunca i never had luck with it you couldn't even like but there was i think there was a wait list but it was like forever and i'm and a it very, was like back ordered too because yeah. he would always be like oh can i like order and like no it's uh -huh. like back ordered <laughs> so it's like i was not gonna go through all that shit and i remember we just randomly went into uh -huh. and the, there's this lady like you said returning it <laughs> and the guy's like are you sure he's like yes. this um, he was like, this bag is super high demand. And if you return and you change your mind, it's going to take you forever to get it again. Yeah. She was like, well, it's because it's damaged. I want like another one. And he's like, well, where is it damaged from? And here I am like eavesdropping, listening. And it's because as she should, though, like it's just you can either choose to be very picky. Or you can just like, me vale verga. Uh -huh. but like this lady, um, I'm sure she probably knows a lot about bags. And she was like, I paid for this fucking bag and I want it to be right. Um, the stitching wasn't aligned correctly. It looked uh -huh. a little like fucked up so she was like if i'm paying so and so much for this fucking bag i need it to be at the price that i'm paying for right so that's what i heard 
And then um, the guy was just like, okay, like I can return it and you'll get your money back. But like for me to get you another one, I don't know how long it's going to take. And if, if I can even get you another one. And she was like kind of thinking about it. And she's like, no, yeah, let's just return it. And he was like, okay. So returning it. And as soon as like he like goes to the side, I was like, wait, is she returning that bag? And he was like, yeah. And then I was like, can I buy it? And I guess the lady heard me. She turns around. Yes, I and remember. And then um, the guy, I think to like be petty, he like looks to her and he's like, you see, somebody already wants to buy it and you yes, just returned it. I remember. And she was like looking like kind of second guessing. Yeah, she was kind of looking like, at me like, oh, stupid shit. though. Yes. And then I was just like, I want it. I was yeah. like, I've been looking for that bag for like forever. And um, the guy was just like, well, unfortunately, like I can't sell it to you because it's being returned as a damaged bag. And I was like, where's the damage from? And then um, he shows me, like, the stitching. He's like, you can barely tell. He's like, but I can see what she's saying about it being, like, unaligned. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, I don't care. Tell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I can't. And I was like, where's your manager? Yes. Like, I wanted that bag so bad, you guys. Yes. And the manager's the one who came out. And he was like, well, technically, like, we can't. It's damaged. And then I was like, well, you guys are going to burn it anyways. <laughs> and I was like, just fucking <laughs> give it, it and sell it to me. He's like, well, I can't sell it to you with a discount or nothing. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> and he made me sign like the only way they were able to get me to do it is the guy created like a form that says I could never return it, I could never do anything with it, blah, 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 because it's damaged. Yeah, it's like, like his forever. But it was like something super minimal that I was just like, I unless you have a fucking microscope, you wouldn't be able like, to tell. But yeah, me valió verga and I bought it. <laughs> yeah, it, that was mine. But I think it's so crazy how like Louis wants to keep their bags at such a like a high mm -hmm. end value, and they yeah. Because, I mean, if things go on sale, the value does depreciate because it's like, uh, it's not that important that they don't care to, like, yeah. put it for cheaper. But exactly. Louis Vuitton's like, nope, I'm not going to do that. So I'd rather burn them than <laughs> have it for cheaper prices. Yeah, I think they want to keep, like, their exclusivity, right? Yeah. So it's like, unless you can afford, like, a Louis bag, then you're not going to get it. Yes. Like you actually said, I guess that's her fun fact, is that... <laughs> um, Probably, like, 90% of your fucking favorite designer brands are have, like, a... An outlet. Yeah. I think Chanel also does not have oh, an yeah, outlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chanel, but... I don't think, like... I think those are... those are. I feel like those are on a whole nother level, like, of designer. I yeah, those are, like, like, top tier, kind of. Yeah. Like, Hermes and, like, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. They're but getting I feel closer like, to that. Like, Prada, fucking Gucci, uh, Balenciaga, like, they all have... Gucci. yeah they all have an outlet so if you ever want a designer bag but you can't really afford because they're fucking expensive go look for an outlet and they actually mm -hmm. have cute bags yeah a lot of times it's just stuff that they you know se vendió en la temporada so they just send it there because they're just trying to yeah. get rid of it yeah so look it up and there's your fun fact of the day now you know where to buy gifts for birthday right. now they're so <laughs> fucking expensive it's not a gift it's a gift for you yeah, and you have to make sure, because a veces nomás le quitan como cinco dólares. You yeah, have to make no, sure that real. Que, there's some que sí le quitan un buen porcentaje. Yeah, and then there's some that it's like fucking ten dollars off. It's like, yeah. Ugh. So but, good luck. Well, thanks for your dumbass fact. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, fucking boring. Like, the only dumbass is me because I bought that fucked up bag. Uh, <laughs> like that I don't even wear. I know, Louis. Uh, do you still use it? No. Pendejo. Pues Dale. por la puta strap. I want to cut that shit off. <gasps> but then you're going to depreciate it. I know. So it's either I keep it forever or I... Have my dad snap it all. I know that's what I was thinking, but it's really expensive. But talking about seasons ah. and uh, are you depressed or what? <laughs> no, but my the, the, I wanted to have like a conversation with you, Ugh. and I wanted to open this conversation to you guys in the comment section below. Ay. No, it's because I like when you guys put your guys's two cents into like our topics. Because it just makes them more interesting. I Abby love Abby. to read the comments. Abby Abby. Okay. So, I'm going to start off with a story. <gasps> so, I remember. I kind of want to talk about. I'm just going to tell you guys, like, the overall topic. It's about, like, the new era of, like. Uh, the new eras tour. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Imagine I just saw talking about the tour for like, uh -huh, for, like, a whole episode. <laughs> no, I just want to talk about this whole new era of, like. Clean girl aesthetic. What? Gym girlies. Um, no more surgeries. Like, this is a whole new era if you're paying attention. Oh, yeah. We're entering a whole new era. The Ozempic era. I, I was going to say, and Ozempic. Like, it's just, it's very different from the era we were in almost 10 years ago. I know. Tanto tiempo, no. Like, six No, it's years been like ago. six, seven. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, like, I just want to, like, dive into that, get your your thoughts and also the first time that i heard about this era okay uh 
Mm. <laughs> Sorry, my neck hurts. So the first time, you guys, that I heard about this era, because it's kind of trippy to me, was back in, I want to say, 2019. 2019. Okay, what? I'm like... Like 2019. Um, that's the first time that I heard about this no makeup, clean girl aesthetic era that was going to come. Okay. But we were still very much in into 2016, the... 2016, 2017? No, it was 2019. But we were still in the MUA vibe? Yeah, I was going to say, we were still in that era of makeup where... It was like the super carved brows, like concealer, Cut crease, like everything, like glitter. that glitter. Very those vibes, and very like all your pictures have to be like picture perfect, like face super, tunes like yes, with the dark lipstick. Very that, no wrinkles on your face, just like smooth Barbie doll. Yeah. And I remember the first time I was working with a, a makeup brand at the time, um, and I remember we were talking. I was in the office, and then in that makeup brand and my manager were just having a normal conversation. They're like, "Yeah, right now we're like." We were, they were talking about how a lot of makeup brands are working, like, two years in advance. Like, oh. right now, 2024, they're already thinking about what's going to launch and what's going to happen in 2027. Dang. And I'm like, oh, shit, like, that's cool. So we were really getting into that. And then they were like, yeah, right now we're, we're working on, like, our new products because we're going to la- launch, like, a new section of our, of our makeup brand to be more, like, um, they didn't call it clean girl aesthetic back then, but it's just, like, no makeup, light makeup shit. And I remember hearing that, and I was like, that's like, fucking ah! stupid. Yeah, like, I literally was work. like, I was sitting right next to them with a full face of makeup, and I was like, bitch. They're like, no, yeah. And I was like, really? Like, yeah, that's going to be, like, the new aesthetic of makeup. Like, um, I guess they all have, like, programs and shit that they look like in the back ends. Uh-huh. And they can they can already see where things are going before they can even predict happen. them yeah. <gasps> all scary and i think it's all of these makeup brands are all on the same boat because they're all working like two years ahead or whatever yeah and and i remember being like just sitting there and be like there's no fucking way that we're gonna go from like full face of makeup to like tinted moisturizer and like barely any makeup like wanting your skin to look glowy when we all look super matte and yeah. like I just remember sitting there and be like, there's no fun. Like, I <laughs> swear to you, I thought it was the most stupidest thing I had ever heard. Because yeah. I didn't think there was, like, trends to makeup. I just, I mean, little trends, like, yeah, like, fluffy brows, car brows, yes. But for it to go from, like, full matte, highlight the house down, matte the house, cut crease. Crazy. To them predicting, like, oh, it's going to be, like, soft makeup. The Hailey Bieber era. Yeah, I was like, <gasps> that's fucking stupid. And <laughs> it was even more stupid because as they were, like, predicting that, I was, like, working on something with that brand yeah um it wasn't beauty creations this was like a whole nother brand that something that just never ended up going through but i remember i was launching something well i was going to launch something that was like super like you know full face makeup and i was like bitch you're saying you're predicting all this other shit (laughs) but it was crazy because fast forward to now like that's really is where we're at right now yeah and it's crazy because i feel like poquito por poquito like everybody slowly started shifting Uh uh-huh and it was it almost became like a mind fuck to me how yeah. i was just like how they always say like um what is that one thing like beauty um fuck it's it's like trendy what people consider beauty is very trendy oh yeah 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 and it's like it's always changing so i think it all, it all that's why people always say it goes deeper into like you know be happy with who you are and what you're doing and blah, because blah, blah. it's always gonna like it's like a trend that comes in and out. People's beauty standards, there you beauty go, are always like standards. changing. Because right now, like I feel like for a majority of like people, the beauty standard right now is very like super like um, light makeup and like little to no makeup yeah. and like um, super skinny and like the whole Ozempic era and like yes. everything. I feel like, and I've seen like a lot of people also going through the route of like undoing surgeries as yes. well. Yes. And it all leads to, like, right now what's in is being very, at, at least very from what thin. I've seen, very thin and just, like. I feel like the Kardashians like, are such a good, like, example oh, of the bitch, way yeah. that trends come in and out. Because Kim Kardashian was the BBL mm-hmm. girly. Like, everybody wanted to have a fat, scrumptiously umptious ass like mm-hmm. Kim Kardashian. And right now, Kim Kardashian, Kylie, Chloe. Um, Courtney's never really had a fat, huge ass, mm-hmm. but they're tiny. They're so fucking yeah. skinny. Like I have never seen Kim Kardashian this skinny before, mm. and Kylie too. Kylie is tiny. Yeah, I mean they, they still, still have, have like an hourglass, but they are like they're tiny. Even their arms are like so little. Uh-huh. Chloe too, and yeah. I'm like, oh my god. And I know it's that fucking Nozembic. I know. I feel like a lot of people are like, but I feel like for me, uh, it's just. I don't know, honestly. Like, for me, like, there's so many people who... 
are using like Ozempic. Uh-huh. But like I can't even tell because at the same time as like, you know, this whole people and celebrities using like Ozempic era is in, there's also a lot of people who are joining their gym era. Yeah. And it's just like, well, how can you tell? Because obviously with the BBL, like, you can tell right away. Yeah. Like, I don't care what it is. Like you can tell right away when somebody has a BBL. And I feel like with this whole, it's just like, what well, is it a gym or is it Ozempic? And same thing with like the when I, uh, Oh my God, the running like, girly. Yeah, I was just like, it's just we're literally entering like a whole new era of like, you know, and I feel like right now what's very in is being like healthy and well, I mean, obviously that should always be in. Yeah. But obviously like being healthy and like gym and like, um, miles. like running, like one miles, <laughs> and, like two miles, like, which there's nothing wrong with that. Like nothing, I feel like out of all the trends that we've had, this is probably like, one of the it's most good one. best ones i feel because th- i mean there was a moment where on my tiktok all it was was people like going on their runs or people spending time outdoors or like whatever it may be but like obviously that makes me happy i feel like i'm like oh people are like putting time to themselves and yeah. like, going trying on little runs and walks or trying to like eat healthier whatever it may be but on the other side it trips me out i'm like damn like it's all like, like it's a all trend. a trend and i was a victim of it uh, <laughs> I remember, like, when I was always younger, I knew I always wanted to get, like, a fat, scrumptiously umptious ass. Like, yeah. that was always a dream of mine, to get a big, fat ass. Um, I always knew I was going to get some type of work done on my butt, because I had no... I mean, I had a little butt, but not enough for me to feel confident with my body. Mm-hmm. But then, when I started coming to L.A., and I started doing all these influencer events, and meeting all these influencers with, like, perfect bodies and perfect butts... I remember one um, specific event that we went to. I had seen all the girlies around me and everyone had a fucking BBL bitch. Mm -hmm. Everyone except me. And I was like, oh, and I was like, dude, I feel like I already felt super insecure about my ass. But just seeing everybody around me have a fat ass and me being like super puerta vibes. (laughs) I was just like, oh, and I remember after that event, I was like, that's it. I'm getting my BBL. And a few months later, I got my BBL. And I think what makes it a little bit easier is, like, um, because everyone did have surgery at the time, well, I mean, still do do because they got it, um, the conversation of surgery is also very easy. And it's something that it was a... It was an easy conversation to bring up and something that it almost didn't make you feel like, oh, I have to overthink because it was super casual. Was yeah, like, oh, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I got a like, BBL. Yeah, and I was like, like oh, I want to get one. Yeah, yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, it was super, like, casual vibes. Yeah. But I think, yeah, now that we're entering, like, this whole, like, clean girl aesthetic. Yeah. I see, like, surgeries almost, like, out of the table. Like, well, the BBL trend was, like, crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone and their moms was getting a BBL. Yeah. Like, do your thing, girl. But it went, like, crazy. And people were like, you guys, like, do some research because it can yeah, be dangerous. Like dangerous. I think BBLs are, like, really, really dangerous. Do that, research. That's why it's always, like, I mean, we've always said it, or, like, I've always said it, too, is, like, if you're going to get a surgery, make sure you're doing it because, like, you want it and not because, like, it's kind of, like, what's in. Because, yeah. like, what you actually said, like, even before I got my BBL, even before I knew BBLs were a thing, I, I knew about implants, but there's no way I wanted to put an implant in my butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before I knew, I was, was like, oh, I want a fucking bigger ass. So, like, yeah, like, I, I did get my surgery, and I'm still really happy with it. But um, it's just crazy how you know things change so quickly with like what's like the beauty standard and what like what's not i feel like right now we're in that time where a lot of people some people are even like regretting their surgeries some people are like removing things i was about to say um i know there's a few girlies well i've known about this for a while that are getting their implants removed oh yeah um because a lot of there there could be a variety of reasons but i know one of them is breast implant illness i've heard of that that's scary and it's like some people believe in it plastic surgeons don't really believe in it shut up yeah a lot of (gasps) there's plastic surgeons that do believe in it and Mm -hmm. then there's some that are like no fuck no like it's stupid but like i don't know i i guess it's like si te pasa te pasa y si no no well explain for the people who don't know i was about to Breast implant illness is basically um, your body basically rejects your implants, but not necessarily rejects them like where you get an infection Mm -hmm. and you get pus and you need them. Not like that. But like you suddenly start feeling very depressed. You'll start like disassociating. You're always like your mood just changes and you might experience hormonal changes, maybe some acne. Just, um, you know, as women, we go through like a lot of changes. But when you just notice these changes like crazy more than usual and they usually 
like one of the bigger signs is that you start becoming depressed and you have a lot of like anxiety. And if it just like comes out of nowhere, people will say that it's because your body is rejecting the implants. Yeah. And so your hormones change and your whole body just starts changing because it's basically like telling you, hey, there's something in your body that mm. you need to get rid of. That is like not meant to be here. So your whole body is like tripping out. Yeah. Because like technically implants don't belong. Nothing foreign belongs in your body. Like mm-hmm. if you weren't born with it, then you should not have it. Yeah. You know, um, but I have imagined that's the reason I'm depressed. Ah, I was about to say, I've never experienced it. (laughs) No, um, but I know some women do believe that that's like the reason. And then they supposedly do feel a lot better after they get them removed. Yeah, I've I've seen a lot of stories of women who were like removed it. And they said that they just felt like they got this whole weight lifted off their shoulders. I'm like, like they can breathe again. And like their mind that a lot of women also describe it as like, um, brain fog brain fog you have a lot of brain fog like you're just like out of it like you're not really there (laughs) but aren't you also supposed to change them like every few years um every 10 years supposedly (gasps) but it's 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 different because back in the day the implants that like when implants first came out that's when the suggestion of every 10 years should be a thing because back in the day implants weren't made to last that long Mm. so that's why it started being like okay you have to get them replaced every 10 years but now the implants that are made because science has evolved and everything has changed the implants that um we get they're a lot more durable Uh so um i asked my doctor dr shadri and i was like should i change my implants and then he was like you technically don't have to if it's not broken don't fix it but Uh i mean if you want to just to feel better then you definitely can Uh but the implants that i have are like gummy bear implants they're made to last Uh a lot no literally because if you like real titties um they're made to last like a lot a lot longer Gross. but All talking right. about boobies and plastic surgery i'm pretty sure i'm getting mine redone oh they're gonna say taken out no <laughs> i definitely want mine bigger, <gasps> bigger, bigger like, mm. but like i like you were saying right now it's not i feel like the trend really is to like get them out and just be clean girl aesthetic but i still want my big cheat cheese <laughs> I just feel more confident with like my girls and because I had baby girl Ella, they got really droopy vibes again mm-hmm. and they're not how I want them all nice and perky. So Dr. Shadri, I'll be hitting you up pretty soon because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I want to get them redone. Sick. So I'll be here doing an episode like recovery. Like, dude. No, and I was gonna ask you about that because I feel like for me, I think You're getting your son too? <laughs> I'm really <you're> not <laughs> bigger than yours. We're all recovering together. No, I was gonna say for me, um, I think when like a few years back when surgery was like really in and like not the not the era that we're in right now, I think I was a little bit part of like the victim. Ah. <laughs> no, because I mean, I'm really happy with my baby on stuff, but I'm saying like in that time where, you know, everything was supposed to be like picture perfect. Yeah. Um, there were so many things that I would look at myself and I wanted to change. Hmm. Like I was super into just because I would see everybody like around me and everybody looked so like perfect. So mm-hmm. in the sense of like filler, Botox, surgery. Oh and, my like, God, Louie, remember how much we were into Botox and filler and all that yeah, shit? And, like 20, when was it? Like 2018, 2019? Yeah. No, it was like 2017, 18 and yeah. a little bit of 19. Yoati and I were super into like oh filler and Botox. Oh my God, dude, we were going like what, every two weeks? And luckily, I feel like we never did things where we never looked like ourselves. Because I don't think I ever really got people being like, Louie, you look different. Because I, I never would do anything that I would like, like, yeah, do same. too much. But there's definitely a time where I look at pictures and I definitely look different. Tu si, Yoati would do the most. Yo no. Me hacía la pinche boconona. Like I had a big old lips and I'd be like. And then she'd be like, I look the same. And I was like, no, you don't, my love. <laughs> like I would get under eye filler. I would get threads inside my cheekbones to like lift my cheeks. I would get filler on my jaw. Like, dude, me pasaba de verga. Yeah, I think for me, like all I would really do was like Botox on my forehead and like my under eye to smooth it i still get botox on my forehead i feel like that's good and i was gonna say there's nothing wrong with getting botox and filler but i was saying like in that time i was like excessively trying to do it the best way to learn a language immersion living where the language is spoken and using it every day but if that's not in the cards this year you can still learn a language the second best way and that's with babel 
One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, make 2024 the year you finally check it off the list with Babbel. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Babbel is so convenient. I have been getting so much better at my Spanish just by doing the courses that they have. I am hoping to one day be able to go back to Mexico and visit my family. And for that, I need to make sure my Spanish is almost perfect. I love how the app makes it so easy to learn how to order food, ask for directions, speak to merchants. It's literally so easy. Babbel has over 16 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash pretty. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash pretty, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash pretty. Rules and restrictions may apply. Our skin has a huge effect on our confidence. If you have acne or are noticing signs of aging, like me, it can be frustrating to waste time and money on products that aren't formulated for you. That's why I recommend Curology. Curology makes personalized prescription skincare products. It's easy. Just fill out a quiz about your skin, share photos, and a provider will prescribe a personalized formula based on your skin's unique needs. Curology products give you everything you need and nothing you don't, without fragrances or parabens. 93% report effective with over 9,000 five-star reviews. Products are shipped directly to your door every two months. Visit Curology.com slash pretty for a special offer. That's Curology, C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash pretty. Offer applies only to your first box. Subject to consultation, new subscribers only. And I also, I remember, like, I had it on my phone. I had a list of surgeries that I wanted to get done. Oh, my God. And because I feel like that was kind of, like, the era in the time that you had to be so perfect that you looked fake. Yeah. And, oh, my God, you guys, there's so many things that I was just like, I'm really glad that I sat down with myself. And, like, I was like, no, it's not really something that I want. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're going to get a surgery, make sure it's something that you really want, not something that's, like, in the moment. Yeah. Because... I know for a fact that if I would have done these surgeries, I would have looked like a completely different person. A hundred percent. And that's what I'm saying. I'm kind of glad for like this new era because it really has like let me like kind of sit with myself and like, you know, Mm -hmm. um, like I'm not saying that like um, if I wouldn't have like sat with myself, I still would have done all the surgeries. But I feel like it really did kind of let me be a little bit more happier with myself and what I look like. Yeah. Than before, like, I kid you not, you guys. And I don't even want to say the the list of like surgeries that I had, but there's uh, there's probably like six that I can think <laughs> off fuck the top you. of my head. Fuck you. I remember some. Yeah. Um. But, oh, fuck, I lost my train of thought. It was a good one. But I'm, I'm sh- glad that you didn't go through with these surgeries mm-hmm. because that would have been scary you there definitely would have been different there was one you guys that i had booked. i don't know no i don't think i've ever talked about it i had it booked and i had the date and i had like about to put in a deposit and like it was coming so soon i ended up canceling it I and i'm really glad i did because that would have i feel like just changed so much of it. like it could have gone really good or it could have gone like really bad i know which one and i didn't want you to get that one done <laughs> i know it was, I, and i was so set in stone but i was just kind of like yeah, 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 say yeah, which yeah. one no uh, no like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> because if i get it done in the future you're still thinking well, what about what if it? we enter another surgery era <laughs> <laughs> okay you guys i don't think i've ever talked about this so you're gonna get the inside scoop what? I almost got ass implants. Oh. Do you remember that? I do remember that one. Okay. I'm not going to call out the doctor, but so when I was trying to get my BBL, I went to different consultations and Louis came, I think, to all of them with me, mm-hmm. except I did one over the phone, but you didn't go to that one, obviously. But, um, One of the first ones that I went to, I went to go see this very popular doctor. He didn't know I was an influencer, 
but he does more chi chi work. Mm -hmm. Like he's really good at his chi chi's. But um, because he was really good at chi chi's, in my head, I was like, oh, then he's probably really good at doing other surgeries too. Mm -hmm. I didn't know at the time that doctors have like a niche, they have their yeah. specialty. Like Dr. Chaudhry, his niche is BBLs. Like uh -huh. that is his niche. The, the first doctor that I went to, his niche was chi chi's. Mm -hmm. So I go and I go see him, regular consultation. He didn't know I was an influencer or nothing. And I told him and I was like, he's like, what, what do you want to get done? And I was like, I want to get a BBL. And I was really skinny. He looks at me right away. He didn't even have to do no nothing. He's like, you can't get a BBL. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why not? And then he's like, you're too skinny. Yeah. And then I was like, oh. And then he's like, but we can do implants. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. Uh, like very like shook it vibes it was just like quick it was really quick like you could tell that he didn't really have interest in it he was just like let's move on quick like it was very like those vibes it was just like let me put an implant move on yeah and then he was just kind of like over it like he i didn't get the best experience from him but then he i was like how do they feel like how do they look he's like they look totally natural like you can't even tell they look better than than a bbl because they won't sag like it's gonna look great he calls one of his girls over he's like look i did implants on her mm -hmm. and he calls over one of his workers and then she comes in and she's all modeling and she just looks like a very perky but it kind of looked like she worked out for her butt like it was muscular because she was also really skinny yes and i feel like implants if you, I feel like if you're really skinny, implants can re re look really like hard almost. Uh -huh. But I feel like for her, it kind of worked out because she was almost like toned. So yeah. it almost looked like it was like a Jimba. But I don't know. It looked a little too like. It, it definitely looked a little too like round. Yeah. And then she even had me touch him. It's like, yeah, touch him. But it, it, I remember touching him and they did feel hard. Yeah, me too. I remember she, I was like, can I take it? Yeah. So and we, we, like, we were all like, poking mm. her butt. But you know what? At the time, I was really young. I was, I think, like 22, 23. I was really young and I really wanted a butt. And it was my first consultation. So hearing it from a plastic surgeon that I wasn't able to get a BBL, yeah. I really thought all of them were going to tell me the same thing. Mm. And I was so discouraged and I really wanted an ass. And I was like, fuck, this is my only option. Mm. So he, he ended up talking me into it and he convinced me and I paid my deposit i paid 500 dollars. i made my appointment and i was gonna get my fucking implants in yeah. like three months yeah i, I was ready that. to go and then um i think maybe the month before i talked to louis and i told him how i was like nervous and mm -hmm. me and louis ended up doing a lot more research and he told me not to he was like no don't do it you need to have more consultations mm -hmm. like i know you want an ask but do your work like because you might regret it. And me and him were doing like research on it. And we're like, I don't think it's a good idea. I'm scared. Yeah. And then he was like, lose your $500. Who cares? And like, it's better for you to be safe. Mm -hmm. And I ended up canceling my fucking she appointment. Yeah. They kept calling me and they were like, uh, your appointment's coming up. I just never answered. Yeah. I like left them like, leave me the fuck alone. Keep my deposit. I was so scared. And then I saw another doctor who told me he was like, you can't get a BBL like you're too skinny. I, I had seen a lot till I met Dr. Chaudhry. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm going to sculpt your body and I'm going to leave you fucking snatched as fuck. And, and he did like from her first one, like first, like for me, I've heard like a couple of doctors be like, you can't like yeah. you didn't like implants. And then seeing how like, like if you can scroll all the way down her Instagram or some shit, <laughs> yeah. like you had hourglass, like you, like he literally gave you like the, a BBL you wanted. Yes. And, um, I really liked my, I were all convincing him to get a BBL. <laughs> 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 no, at the time why I did it, he, he really took out all my little lonquitas that I had left for my mom body and just snatched me yeah. the, like uh, upside down heart vibes. Yeah. Um, but if you are thinking about getting plastic surgery, don't go with your first choice. Like, well, it could be the best choice, your first choice, but make sure you get more consultations before. I always recommend that to the girlies. Like go to three to four different doctors till you pick your your one because I almost went with the implants. Yeah. And that's so scary. Implants are dangerous. Your body can reject them. You just said <laughs> that that doesn't happen and you have them in your chi -chis. No, butt implants. Butt implants are so much scarier than breast implants. It's the same. No, it's so much different. I I think one of the doctors told me that um, seven out of ten are good, and then three out of ten patients will reject the butt implants. 
And then with breasts, it's like a lot more chill. But because the butt implant is so much more invasive, like, oh, it's just look it up. It's it's gross. It's scary. And it's like a bigger like um, incision too, no? It's a bigger incision. And then the implant itself, it's not like a breast implant. You know how the breast implants have like liquid inside them or they're Uh like jelly on the inside? A a butt implant is like solid. They're like duos. It almost looks like a sponge. Like, yeah, like a thick, dense sponge. Like, it's not squishy. It. It, it literally is like duro, very duro vibes. So the material that it's made out of is just weird. It's not like a breast implant. But it's cheaper than a BB on it. Um, I don't know. It I might depend. Because they're just putting it in there. You think they're so? Like, <laughs> they're all moving your muscles and yeah, everything because with a, a bbl it's like lipo and then putting in all this all this other shit you're right it sure. might be cheaper i don't know yeah mine was like that too i almost got a implant in my ass too oh it was my the same God. thing like um they told me i don't have like enough fat i don't think like the fame uh, <laughs> so they're like you don't want to do even a little implant and i was like Mm-mm. a little implant. and they showed it to me it was all little and i was like it's not gonna do anything they're like it's gonna give you like that volume and i was like Mm-mm. Mm-mm, i'm good I was like, I'd rather be no butt. All right. No, I think I think butt implants are just so scary. Yeah. What do you think about this whole new? And, and I wanted to ask your opinion because, like I said, it is like an era, and almost like a little bit of a trend about like the whole clean girl makeup vibe. But not everybody's participating in it, obviously, porque gente tiene sus gustos, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like you're kind of like full B, or you're just like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Like, I feel like you, you're you fine coming out like with just your skin because you have really good skin and you're just like, oh, yeah, like I'm chilling. But if you're going to get glam, you're going to get glam. And yeah. you're like, no, I want like my full coverage. I yes. still want like my lashes, like lips. And then where the trend is right now, it's very much just like BB cream and like a little lip tint. I feel like um, I kind of like the clean girl aesthetic, mm-hmm. but it looks really pretty on young Fresh out the womb girlies. Like Andrea vibes. No, I feel like it looks really pretty on everybody. Not when you get older. Like me. (gasps) Bitch, if I do it on you, it's going to look really pretty. So my everyday routine right now, because like right now, I just have concealer. I have lash extensions. I have like three lashes left. (laughs) Concealer, blush, and lipstick. That's like all I put on. That looks like super like, I thought that was just your skin. Oh, really? Yeah, I swear. I try to do, this is like my everyday makeup. When I'm like, like for this is my gym makeup. Well, then she's just really good at fucking clean your aesthetic. Because I thought you had like no fucking makeup on. This is just, this is my gym makeup. So you're a liar. Uh, you fooled <laughs> all of us. I thought that was your skin. <laughs> no. um, And then I put a little, at the gym, I just put chapstick. I yeah, yeah, la verga. Then why am I asking you shit? You have a whole clean your aesthetic. Ya ves, ya también. Uh, but like, it's because it works well the other reason i was asking is also because i feel like with like your because i feel like there's also trends obviously with clothes and stuff yeah and i still think you're very true to like your style of like clothes uh you dress like shit no <laughs> because yoatsi will not put on like a fucking a loose cargo pant and like okay so louis bought me uh, Louis Vuitton. No, just kidding. <laughs> he bought me my diesel sweatsuit. Uh-huh. A really beautiful diesel sweatsuit. But I've been waiting. I want to ask Louis to like dress me. Why? Like style me with that pantsuit. Like style me with it. Like do my hair. Like if you were Yoatsi and you uh. were about to wear that outfit, how would you style it like from head to toe? Mm-hmm. You know, I want you to like dress me and like do my makeup and like all that. Because I feel like I like it, but the way that I would put that outfit on Mm -hmm. is like just put it on with some cute little sneakers and a bag and call it a day. Oh, okay, okay. But it's going to look very Fodonga vibes. (laughs) And I feel like you would dress it up to where it's like Fodonga, but purposely Fodonga in like a baddie way. Oh my God, I feel like that's, I mean, I have my days where I'm like super Fodonga, like very much, but I feel like even on like, the lazy outfits like i try to He's make him not look so so fodonga yeah like i feel like this outfit could easily be very like lazy fodonga vibes but I'm i like feel like is. no i feel like he dresses it up like he adds little touches that just elevate the look mm-hmm. a little bit should give us a class uh, I mean, uh, everyone looks like shit for baddies with babies <laughs> we're gonna have louis give us a class Bitch. on how to dress <laughs> baddies with clothes <laughs> <laughs> he takes out his clothing line he's like shop here <laughs> i'm all selling it at your at your little at my location it's like buy if you want to be a bad bitch like, buy some gift cards <laughs> uh, just kidding. no yeah but that's why i like i wanted to ask because i thought 
well from an outside view i feel like you you are very much like this is what i like and what i like and i'm not gonna change it i try though i know like the whole car the whole cargo thing <laughs> louis um i remember one time I don't know where the fuck we were going and I was going to buy some skinny jeans. We were with Andrea and both of them were like, I know those are so out, like buy some cargos. And I was like, I don't know. And they're like, no. So they told me what cargos to buy and like what style. And then for a while I was wearing cargos like all the time. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. And I haven't touched the pair of skinny jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it's because look, you guys, I really don't know where I, like, I stand because I am all for people having like a hundred percent have your own fucking style. Like do not follow the trends. Don't do like have your own style, be like unique or whatever. But then I also, I enjoy following the trends because I feel like it keeps me feeling. Keeps you on your toes. It keeps me on my toes. It keeps me always feeling like, like fresh as in like, I'm not left behind. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's a big fear of mine. You guys is to feel like I'm being left behind. Like, yes. like I'm stuck in time. That's a huge fear of mine for people to look at me and be like, be, you're still t stuck in 2012 <laughs> yeah. but that but that's what i'm saying i don't know where i stand because i know for example right now the trend is very like soft girl no makeup makeup but i'll see like the girls or anybody who will still do a full face and like hard brows and i'm like she better work like yes. i still see it and appreciate it for mm -hmm. what it is and they look sickening like yes. that's what i'm saying like i don't know where i stand because like for me personally, like, I feel like I am somebody who kind of rides the wave. Okay. Because I enjoy, like, right now I'm very, like, bitch, if you would have told me that I'm wearing loose-ass jeans like this, I would have laughed at your face. Like, this yes. is not something that I would wear. Or even the whole, like, no makeup, makeup. Like, right now I, I'm the same as you. I just have, like, a tinted moisturizer with, like, a little bit of concealer and that's it. And it looks pretty. It's so clean. Thanks. But you still look, like, put together. Yeah, and, like... I have a whole ass, I have my vanity room, you guys, where it's like all my full glam, like everything, everything. And then I have, now I have a whole drawer in my bathroom. Me too! Right? Of just like my everyday makeup. Yeah, it's like right there, the concealer, the yeah. little powder. Like your everyday is right there. And before, like you would not catch me with, if I'm gonna do makeup, I'm gonna do fucking makeup. It was no in between. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's why, that's another thing with me. It's like I... You know, I enjoy it. I enjoy kind of riding the wave because it lets me I try new things. I enjoy riding the day. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> no, it lets me like just have fun yeah. because I'm always trying new things. Like for a good minute, I did not want to let go of like my full face of makeup. <laughs> yeah. But then I was just like, well, let me try it. And I started off with like a few. I probably had like five products and like my no makeup makeup. It was just like moisturizer and it was like, um, like a little bit of concealer and uh chapstick and i yeah. feel like now i have a whole drawer full of like no make it make yeah. like it. even this, this is like my fucking five minute like let me leave the house but if i really want to do like my good no makeup makeup it like there's it looks, a lot that goes into it okay and it still looks like very well put together but very clean girl aesthetic and i feel like also like you were saying riding the wave i try because i am 45 <gasps> <So> <gasps> <Fuck> <laughs> you. i'm 28 i'm gonna be 29 soon and I feel like if it wasn't for my siblings, I would probably still be stuck in like 2016 vibe. <laughs> in King Kylie era. Ah, like that would be my era. You have like a neon wig. There. Neon wig. I'd have my little crazy carved out brows. My red lipstick. I'd be like, There's still that? people who do that. I know, but I'm talking about myself. Uh. <laughs> no, I had to like tone it down. I think actually Andrea is like a perfect example of like, her own aesthetic. I love Nan. Because I feel like Andrea's always kind of had like that, like like her aesthetic of like how she dresses. Or I saw that one TikTok that she like dressed you and you were like, <gasps> That was so <laughs> fucking funny, dude. Because she was always like, Sissy, why don't you change your style? And I was like, into what? Yeah. And then she was like, let me dress you. And she, she this bitch wanted to put me <laughs> in her fucking clothes, but she forgot that I have a big BBL. So my <laughs> style, like hers is so clean and pretty and dainty. I was like, very my, flowy yeah my big old ass could never i looked <laughs> ridicula in what she put me in dude <laughs> that was a funny thing and then that. that that's what she was like okay we're never doing this again <laughs> <laughs> I know, and then i was like take it off and then, and then i was like oh yeah take it off she was like, I tried. and then like i have my big old fucking implants and her oh, shirts yeah, and are all shirt. like tiny i was like great my titties all out <laughs> <laughs> Pinche Andrea. No, yeah. that was funny but i definitely want to try to 
maybe put you in like what's trending right now to see how you would like it. A ver, what's trending right now? I feel like what's very trendy right now would be like, like okay, right off the top of my head, like an outfit that I feel like I can put on Yoatsi would be like looser jeans where like they're still kind of like they're I wear looser jeans. I'm not done talking. <laughs> so like a loose kind of like jean. It could still be tight and like fitted at the waist, but uh -huh. like loose at the bottom. And then you'd put a pointy heel. Oh. Yeah, you see? So it would be a jean of some sort with like a pointy heel. Okay. And I could put you in like um like a tight shirt, whether it's like a little tube top or like a, a strap little top or a tank, but cropped. And then put you in like a jacket that's a little bit more bigger, but like almost still cropped because the point is like to still like um you complement look your body. Bulky but tight. Well, not bulky but tight, but I think it complements your body. Where like you can wear something oversized, but it's still fitted to you, so it still shows you. That's what I'm saying. Like the the style right now is kind of like it's a little hard because if you just wear bulky ass shit, then you're not gonna be able to see like your figure or anything. Yeah. Yeah, and then like. <clears throat> Some sunglasses with like light girl makeup, which is like maybe just like curling your lashes, mascara, and like very like tinted moisturizer skin, and like a, a little shoulder bag, and call it a fucking day. Oh, and a lot of jewelry. Oh, it would scary. have to be like a lot of jewelry. I love the outfit. What I am not feeling right now is how you said that I have to dress all like that and then have like almost no makeup. I feel like if I'm going to dress like that, I have to have full beat. Like a full beat. And I, you still definitely can, but I still, that's what I'm saying. Like the trend right now would be something like that. And I still think it would look pretty on you. I think we should do a video where Louis dresses me. Yeah. Yeah, we have to do that. That would be a good one. Are you that one friend in the friend group that loves to treat yourself? It's okay. Honestly, we all do it. You know you always buy double at a sale because it's like saving money. Well, if you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find a book tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all with verified patient reviews. So don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. SockDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. I was recently looking for a new dentist and didn't know where to go. But thanks to ZocDoc, I was able to find a highly rated dentist near me. Go to ZocDoc.com slash PrettyNotSmart and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash PrettyNotSmart. ZocDoc.com slash PrettyNotSmart. Hi, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Yossi's <laughs> Prettier Than Louis. Ah, babe. Um, let's talk about gym aesthetic. Oh, yeah, like the whole new era of like... Fit. Like gym life. Fitness. Like fitness. Yeah. I feel like me and you are victims of this. But I've been a victim for uh, forever. I, yeah, I feel like me and you have been trying to get into the gym since like 2017 uh, when yes. we first started working the out fucking gyms back home the back home what was that one gym called dude they closed it, it. Oh, well thank god yeah what was it called total Fit republic, Fit republic or or, no. yeah i think it was Fit they republic. It to something else fitness evolution fitness? <laughs> in watsonville you guys but when we just went for ella's baptism they changed it to a total fitness like toad oh. like a sapo Total. Total fitness. We're calling everybody Toad. <laughs> Get in the fucking gym. Like, Total <laughs> fitness. Um, but remember, we used to work out, and then I used to like work out under the stairs. I was, I was gonna so say shy. this was pre BBLs. Pre -BBL we didn't even know era. BBLs were a thing, so yeah. we were trying so hard to like grow <laughs> our butts, and we were so. It's because, bitch, I'm sure y'all can all agree that booty workouts are the most awkward fucking workouts to do in the gym. They're so embarrassing. I'll even see like guys do TikTok like like straight men doing like tiktoks about like how awkward they feel doing like their Booty butt workouts because they're like dude like it's just they're all like super like fucking bending down or like you have to stretch your legs open and yes, like they're so weird but i think now thanks to the 
fitness trend that's going on in the gym um trend that's going on right now they're a little bit more normalized and it's yeah. like oh she's just doing booty day uh -huh. but back in the day como que no and if you were to do booty day everyone's just like what the fuck is this bitch doing or maybe just at the gym that we would go to because yeah. in that gym that we would go to back in Watsuma, it was very men dominated yes so like me and yoatsi uh, occasionally we would see like another girl too and they would be like in the same spot hiding yeah we'd be hiding under the stairs and like we'd always there was like these stairs and we would just take the equipment under there <laughs> it felt super like pobrecita vibes because the whole gym was being like dominated by like guys and all shit the buff ass dudes all alex's everywhere <laughs> and we'd be like under like the the stairs like hoping that nobody would look at us yeah. Ew, do you remember that one workout that it was almost like the froggy one where you're laying on your back and uh -huh. your feet are on top of the bench <gasps> and you're too like yes they're like hip thrust but with your legs like the heels of your toes are on top of a thing no the heels of your toes or the, the heels of your foot the <laughs> <laughs> your patas were just inclined somewhere okay you were like hip thrusting up but you you're like, yes dude <laughs> it was just so awkward and you know what i mean back in the day you know how now bright colored leggings and all those things are like at the gyms like sickening uh -huh. back in the day nobody used bright color leggings and like really? shit like that i feel like i would always wanted to wear pink but me daba cosa i'd be like no i could only wear black because it would oh, make me man. feel comfortable yeah. i think it was probably just the gym that we went to yeah because it was still very had... men dominated. yes oh my god louis yeah. um i'll get into the aesthetic that i was talking about right now but so <laughs> that day when we went back to watsonville me and alex wanted to get a workout in and we went to gold's gym <gasps> in watsonville I dude i was terrified because i haven't gone to a gold's gym in a long time just because i feel like gold's gym has a very weird reputation reputation intimidating intimidating reputation, reputation. there's always these big ass buff ass dudes going in there like we're out, like we're better than you vibes like i feel like before there was so many gyms like that was the gym that was like looked at like the top of the top yes so it's like everybody who like yeah any experience would go to gold's would gym. go to gold's gym it was you know gold's gym just always has like a, a weird stigma to it and i feel like it kind of stayed that way in watsonville really? it's like the top That's tier like the gym top tier gym in watsonville you know and so me and Alex went, oh my God, bitch, I had so much anxiety. Really? And oh my God, I didn't think I was going to work out. So I took no gym clothes. So I had to go to Ross and buy myself a cute little gym outfit. Mm -hmm. The por si the clothes I was wearing was already super uncomfortable porque no me quedaba bien. I walk into the gym. Ay, Dios mío, it's alpha male central. That, well, so uh -huh. many dudes. Well, to tell you guys that that gym in Watsonville has a section just for women. Yes. Do they not have it anymore? They, so they remodeled the gym. Uh -huh. It looks beautiful. Oh, it's wow. really nice. Like, uh -huh. they redid the wall. Like, uh, nada que ver to before. It's so upgraded. I was like, oh, shit, this is nice. Some of the machines are still outdated, but it was very nice. And I walk in and I forgot about the women's section because I was so nervous. Yeah. I was just with Alex. Dude, so many dudes. Like, I kid you not, 50 dudes and maybe like three girls. Yeah. And they were just like, rrr, rrr. like I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and all these big old monsters. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it felt like. Um, and I was just working out with Alex and it's all just big buff ass dudes yeah. like it's not like you know casual no so it just makes you feel like you don't belong and i mean i've been working out for a long time now but i still felt like a fucking outsider yeah. and at some point um you know how where the weights are at mm -hmm. that's like the only spot where there's nice mirrors and i had to go do my little arm work out there so i was just there and i just felt like every single dude was like who the fuck is this bitch move yeah. um but then after when i went to go wash my hands i go to the back me and alex went to go explore the women's section all nice oh so and they moved it they in the moved back? it it's in the back and it's so nice and there was like five girls in there doing their workouts and i was like great and i was <laughs> like why did i not work? know i was like i'm done working out but they have a really nice women's section and but that's how you know that they know that it's like, it's like male, male dominant. dominant and they're like okay girls you we have a little section for you i, I remember like, like Fuck you guys when me and you had to would go to like that first gym that we were talking about in watsonville and then we wanted to like be a little bit more like uh. <laughs> we went to we upgraded to gold's gym and um <laughs> i remember like i knew about the girl section but then fucking you these lazy ass and would never want to go and i already paid for it so i was like well i want to go so i remember i'd be like can i go in the girl section <laughs> so then i would like just walk in there some of the girls were like 
what are you doing here? Get out. Like, no, they would never say anything. But I think at first they'd be like, what the? Because they'd see like a guy going in there. Yeah. Then I'd like stick my hip out a little bit. And they'd be like, oh, yeah. Like, okay, you're going to But like at the beginning, like they'd always be like, <laughs> Like what is like, he doing here? Yeah, yeah, and then I just like to be doing my workouts and then I like, my little booty workout. Yeah, yeah, you stuff. feel like a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, because <laughs> Do you remember that one time I got crushed by the the fucking machine? <laughs> yeah. The leg press? We were all cracking it. It was just me and Louie and I were pendejos. We were like fuck around in the machine stambien. And we were gonna do leg press at Gold's gym. And we were trying to like figure it out. And I couldn't <laughs> figure out the leg press. So the machine just like fell on me and like squished me. I was like, whoa, wait. <laughs> and I'm all trying to like ask for help. Este pendejo en lugar de ayudarme. He's just cracking. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, whoa, wait. Like, eventually we got the machine off and then some <laughs> lady saw us and then some lady comes she's like do you guys need help we're like no we're like no we got it <laughs> she probably was like these fucking kids yeah we were giving like super kid vibes we're giving yeah fucking mocoso vibes but i was so embarrassed Louis. <laughs> what were you gonna say about the whole gym aesthetic whatever just how like it's such a big thing mm -hmm. um and like i have a love and hate for him that it's a big thing for my, for me personally, oh, I have big love for it because um, it gets you motivated because you see all of these girlies mm -hmm. and how they post all their content. Oh yeah! Oh my god, dude, I'm obsessed with like specifically this girl named Annalise Cruz. Mm -hmm. I think that's her name. Oh my god, she is so. I posted her on my story. Her and her mans. And I was like, me and Alex in the oh, future. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, she's beautiful. And she's so big and, like, buff. And she looks so good. And uh -huh. her mans are, Rawr! and I was like, that's literally me and Alex. But just seeing, like, all of these girls motivate you. Well, they mm -hmm. motivate the fuck out of me. Because yeah. I'm like, oh, I can definitely get there. And I could definitely be this, like, big buff gym girly. Yeah. And all of the workouts that they put out there. Because back in the day, like, you would see workouts, but not as much as you see them now yeah. and so many different ways of doing them and yes like forms and, and like i love watching those videos of like get ready with me to the gym and like yeah. the cute outfits and mm. like especially the gym that we go to the one that i just showed you mm. you see a lot of bad bitches everywhere mm. like with their cute ass outfits and like they just like motivate me and they make me want to like go harder at the gym yeah but also what i don't like and nobody tells you this what when you go to the gym and you start taking your gym life seriously you start getting really bad body dysmorphia oh my god yeah i, I feel like that's such a huge it is thing. the most annoying thing i've ever experienced in my life and i was actually just talking to my trainer about it a shout out to juju <laughs> she trains me and she has been since like december oh my god and i was just telling her and i'm like dude i feel horrible and i'm like how come like I, I ran to her and I'll be like, why do I feel so horrible if I'm technically on the scale? We, we do that one scale that tells you your body fat, your muscle index, all that stuff. And the numbers are getting better. Yeah. But I'm like, but why do I feel so horrible? Yeah. And I'm like, I feel like yeah. my body dysmorphia is like at an all time high with BBL yeah. y todo. And she was like, you know what? She's like, it gets worse. Like the, yeah. the buffer and the healthier you become, the worse it gets for whatever reason. And I'm like, oh, allegedly, dude, allegedly no one from my experience. Cause there's days where like, like for example, I just went to the gym, um, two days ago and I wore this really nice pair of green leggings with like a, a cropped bra and my back was all exposed cause I was doing back day. Yeah. Dude, I felt horrible. Like I wanted, I put my pump cover back on oh, because yeah. I felt so embarrassed and I just felt like horrible. And Alex was like, no, you look really good. I'm like, yeah. I don't feel good at all. Yeah. Like, you know, you just have those fucking days. And I think that's like one thing that I absolutely hate about the gym right now. I feel like that's something that like everybody goes through and I always try to snap myself out of it. And I feel like one of the first times that I kind of like came across that, um, I used to have, a trainer and he was really fit like uh, to me he was a fucking 10 out of 10 yeah i was like wow man. i thought it was no he, he looked like super fit but there'd be times where like even when he'd work out and stuff he'd always have like shirt on i mean not that i would expect him to be shirtless but there's other people in there <laughs> he was like take it off no there's like other people in there with like tanks or like whatever it may be you know but he'd always be like no i'm just not happy with how i look or blah, blah. and i was like what the and then that's where i kind of started hearing more about like a lot of people in the gym have really bad like body dysmorphia uh-huh and i was just like, like where they just don't feel like they're like skinny enough or they don't feel like they're fit enough or muscular enough or big enough or whatever it may be they're uh -huh. always comparing themselves either to how they used to look or how 
they've looked at their best or how other people in the gym look. And I remember, like, I would, like, full-on trip out because I was, like, a lot of these, like, trainers that were there were kind of like that where they would never, like, to show anything. Uh -huh. There was another trainer who, again, looked really buff and stuff, but he would never want to, like, he'd always work out with a hoodie and stuff. He never wanted to take his things off because he's, like, I just don't look how I want to look or, like, Damn, and I was, like, dude. damn, like, So you're you know, telling me it's going to get worse? No, I don't think that it's going to get worse. I think we just all kind of need a... I mean, as hard as it is, easier said than done. Just kind of, like, remind ourselves. And I think one of the best and biggest things is, like, taking pictures along the way. I take pictures when I full-on feel at my worst and I fucking hate it. But there's times where, like, I really, I don't want nobody to look at me. I don't feel like I, I look good at all. I'll take a picture to remind me, like, if just to have it in there. Because you always need, like, I feel like pictures are your biggest proof of, right. like, change. Your hard work. And also the scale. I try not to look at the scale as much anymore. Just because I had a really unhealthy relationship with looking at the scale. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at a regular scale, you don't know if your body fat is going down and your muscles going up. And right. that's why the scale is going up. You don't know that. And I don't have like one of those fancy scales that tells me my body fat's going down and my muscles going up. Uh -huh. So if I look at the scale and I keep seeing the numbers go up, I could still be losing weight and gaining muscle. But I'll look at it and be like, oh. and it's just it was a really unhealthy relationship for me. Mm -hmm. But I feel like... um Correct me if I'm wrong or if this is how you experience it. But I feel like with me, I'll be at home sometimes. And I mean, I know I don't look amazing. I'm not like the most buff guy or nothing like that. I don't even have that much like fucking muscle definition. But I'll be at my house and I'm like, oh, yeah, like I look OK today. Like, I'm ah, good. You're cute. and then I'll go to the gym. I'll put like a nice out outfit at my house, something that might show a little bit more body. I'll go to the gym and I start getting like <laughs> almost like insecure yeah. or I start feeling like what you said, where I just want to put my shit back on. I don't want to be there because then I'll start looking at everybody else around me. And yeah. I'm like, well, they look so much better than I do. So yeah. then I'm like, Oh, uh, <laughs> I just want to like back on. Yeah. For me, it just like come and goes. Like there's days where, um, I'll wake up like my morning skin and I'm like, God damn, I feel yeah. amazing. Yeah. I'll put on my cute gym outfit. And sometimes the amazingness will stick on. But then there's days like apenas two days ago, I woke up and I was like, oh, okay, like, morning skinny there. Put on my outfit. I get to the gym and I'm like, oh, hell no. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck's going on? <laughs> and I was like, hide me. And I just want to put my clothes back on. So like if any of you guys are going through something like that or like feel like that, just know that like it's very common and don't like beat yourself down for it because the majority, I, mean, I think I've heard this somewhere where it's like the, the reality is the majority of the people in gym are feeling very similar to how you're feeling Aww. even if they look at their best well you might think they look at their best but then they might not feel at their best so mm. yeah but i mean going back to the whole like eras and gyms and stuff i think for me this is one of like my, my favorite mm -hmm. eras trends whatever the fuck you want to call it just because like you said it's a lot of content that's being pushed out that mm -hmm. i feel like does give me that push or sometimes like i'll be at home and i didn't go to the gym and then i'll see somebody i'm like fuck i should have gone to the gym yeah, but I feel like it's it's a good. I want to say again, quote unquote trend. It's a good trend. To it's a good trend. Be on yeah, and it's like a it's a healthy trend. Like yes. it's not gonna do anything bad to you unless you're doing stupid shit at the gym. But I mean, I would hope that maybe when I post my little gym pics or when I yell at you guys on Snapchat, I'm like, go to the gym. <laughs> I hope it motivates some of y'all to like get up and go to the gym and just start feeling good about yourself. Hopefully, I think with me, yeah, it's like what you said. Like this whole like aesthetic or whatever has really made me just want to be more in tune with myself, whether it's like my looks and like, um, um, like being outside more often, like this whole like quote unquote gym aesthetic trend thing is not so much like pushing me to like go out in like to the gym. Mm -hmm. But another thing that it's helped me with is like, I wake up earlier um, and I take the time to like walk my dogs out. Oh, that's cute. And like before, like the, when I would get to walk my dogs, it'd be like once in a while, like when I fucking have the time throughout my day but now it's just like no like i want to not only like go to the gym but also want to be like out more and like enjoy the mornings and like, like do whatever that. it may be so i feel like i have like that set time in the morning to go walk them and be That's like okay hey, like cute. i feel productive and i feel good and like also my dogs got to get a little walk in so yeah i mean it's a lot but i think this whole i want to know if you guys think that this whole thing is like a new era or a trend or whatever maybe because i think it's a whole bunch of things yeah. But they all fall into the same category. Like yeah. the clean girl, the no makeup healthy. makeup, healthy, like going to when the gym. Um, maybe some people even like wanting to undo surgeries because they're feeling more in tune with themselves or whatever it may be. I, I do think it's a whole. 
it's an era. And you know what I just realized? What? I'm also trying to implement this healthy mom era in my baddies with babies. Yeah, literally, literally exactly that. So if you guys didn't know, I started a mom club called, what's well, a parent club? Because it's not just for moms, for parents. Uh, baddies with babies and i am going to do like events for my mommies but um i really want to implement the health side to my baddies with babies because i'm really into being healthy and getting active and i feel like as a mom that can be really hard like when it's just you by yourself like that's already hard but when you have a chamaco chamaca that you have to take care of you don't always have the time to go on your walks because say your kids don't want to or like whatever it is. It just it's it's hard, definitely harder for parents. That's why people say that um, going to the gym and like doing that is a privilege. Yes. I hear that a lot because unfortunately, like a lot of people don't have the time to do it or to wake up early and go or like mm -hmm. to work like yeah so si no tienen niños do take advantage que no tienen niños and go get healthy for yourself but i wanted to start doing these healthy events for my mom so like motivate them like the first one we did was yoga at the park mm -hmm. and i got so happy because a lot of mommies um that went said they'd never done yoga and they've yeah. always wanted to uh -huh. and i wanted to do it outside to kind of force some of us to be outside, get some vitamin D, hear the nature, because sometimes we take all that stuff for granted and we're not able to do that on like a daily basis, yeah. you know? And then our next one that I want to do, it's going to be a free event. I haven't um, looked at the details yet, but I want us to go on a three mile hike. Ooh. I mean, walk, not hike with our strollers. We'll bring the kids with our strollers oh. and we get to walk around. I'm like, and it'll get some mommies like hopefully motivated to keep doing that on their own like just know that it made them feel good it made you feel good and then your chamacos are like Wee! just staring at nature yeah. yeah no that's really cute yeah i noticed that with like you having like fruit there or like the healthy drinks no alcohol and, yeah like, no alcohol we did healthy drinks uh -huh, the fruit. we did protein shakes fruit yeah. i feel like i definitely noticed that and i feel like it's things like that where i don't know i think it's a good thing to be implementing yeah, so let's all get healthy together, whether it's a trend or not. <laughs> I'm not. Once the trend's over, I'm over it. I see. No, yo lo voy a entrar a los pinches hachitos. But yeah, you guys, it was just a little food for thought. All yeah, right. I hope you guys episode. enjoyed this whole ass rant about aesthetics. <laughs> Once you guys see Yoati in her whole clean girl aesthetic, y si se baña. Oh, yo me baño know. diario. <laughs> bueno, diario. Fuera. Let us know what you guys think about this. If you guys have been a victim, if you guys don't give a <laughs> fuck about it, if y'all are just living your life. And yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Dumb and Dumber. We'll see you guys. We'll see you next week. On the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.